All right, in this activity, we're going to explore combinatorics, which is really just looking at a bunch of different ways of counting. So in exercise one, we're going to start by creating a tree diagram. And what a tree diagram is, is it's a way of listing or showing all the different possibilities. So suppose we want to flip a coin and then roll a dice. We want to know how many different possibilities there are. So a head or a coin could be either a head or a tail, and a dice could be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So if we have some sort of like starting point, then we're going to branch off, that's why we have a tree, and we'll be either a head or a tail. So once we have our, our coin flipped, then we're going to roll the dice, and since there's six ways that can happen, I'm going to draw six branches on here. So it's either one, two, three, four, five, or six, and the same for if we got a tail, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this shows all the possibilities. If you start at this point here and travel along one branch, that's one thing that could happen. So we could get heads and then roll a one. Or we start here, we roll heads and then we get a two. And we could get heads and then roll a three. So you can see all of the different possibilities. And so a quick way to count that is to look at our endings. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ways to end. So that means we're going to have 12 of those branches, which is really 12 of those possibilities. Um, for the next one, what we're talking about is getting dressed. It says we're going to have some outfits going on. Um, we have four shirts, three pairs of pants, four pairs of socks, and two pairs of shoes available. So assuming that uh, all the items can go together, we can see all the different ways that we um, could get dressed. So drawing a tree again, we could start with the shirts. So here I am, I need to make a decision. I'm gonna wear the first shirt, I'm gonna say shirt number one, just a notation for that. Or I could take shirt number two, or I could take shirt number three, or I could take shirt number four. So once I have a shirt, then I have to choose my pants. It says I have three pairs of pants to choose from. So each shirt could then branch off to a pant. I'm going to put like a P1, P2, P3, just to say like the three different pairs of pants. P1, P2, P3, P1, P2, P3, and last P1, P2, P3. So um, again, if I look at one starting point, I'm going to go pick out my shirt, then pick out a pair of pants. So that's like one direction that I could do so far. But you can see that, whoa, I'm getting a lot of options now. Since there were four different shirts, and now there's three different pairs of pants, the total so far is like there's 12 different ways to put those together. So once we pick our pants, though, then it's like, okay, well, socks, that will make it a new outfit. So for each pair of pants, we're going to go off to four different pairs of socks. So I'm just going to put like four little things from there. It's getting a little tedious. As soon as we start seeing some patterns, <laughs> we won't have to do this anymore. So each of these goes off four different ways. Um, and those are different socks. So um, what if I just number those off? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's like first sock, second sock, third pair of socks, one, two, three, four, 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 continuing on. Whoa, okay. So again, there were four different shirts, three different pants, four different socks. So um, we have a lot going on here. So there are four, really it's going to be times those three pairs of pants, times those four different socks. And then we have two shoes. So each one of these has to go out to two shoes. So like a one, two, and a one, two, and a one, two, and a one, two. Okay, so just looking at this one branch, let's see if we can understand what's happening here. So just looking at if we choose the first shirt, it's going to have three different ways that it could go. So right now that's three different ways, but then each of those pants goes off four. And so that's going to be three times, well, four, 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 three times four, that's going to be 12 ways. But then each of those goes off two, so that's going to be a total of 24. So just for this little piece, that's going to be a 24. <coughs> So if we think about what's happening, do, 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 um, that's going to happen 24 on this one also, 
right? There will be 24 endings once you break off the two because right now there are 12 and then if each one of those breaks off, right, that's 24. And we're going to get 24 ways here and then 24 ways here. So if, let's quick add, that's a 48 and a 48. So 96 different ways altogether. And if you had a, a bit more room and want to draw that out, you can count out, count out exactly how many branches there are. But what's actually happening, um, if you want to do it quickly, is really just multiplication. So if there are four ways to do the first thing, then three ways to do the next thing, and you multiply that, you get that there's 12 different branches. But then there's more. Each of those branches off four, and then those branch off two. So altogether, we have that, which is also equal to 96. And what that's called when we do that quick multiplication way instead of the longer tree is the fundamental counting principle, which you could see here. <clears throat> and it says that if you have uh, two or more categories and there are M items in one and N items in another, then the total available choices is just their product, just multiply them. And sometimes it's called the multiplication rule for probabilities. That's kind of the future where we're heading. We'll do probabilities um, next after this. So for number two, it says you want to use this fundamental counting principle or basic counting rule. And we want to see how many license plates there are, how many license plates are possible. It seems like they are all different, right? So if we um, want to try and calculate this, let's see. So we want to have this form where it's a number, letter, 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 number, number, number. And so think about how many digits there are. Digits are just the single numbers. If we can include zero, we're going zero to nine. So there are 10 different numbers you can have. There are 26 letters in the alphabet. So I'm writing like these are the different ways that each of these categories can happen or how many items are in each one. So we're going to multiply them because that's what the fundamental counting principle did. I don't want to start and say, okay, well, I could use the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then each of those can go off to 26 letters. Like, I don't want to draw the tree for that. So that's where this kind of comes in handy to realize that really that was just multiplication. And if you multiply all of that out, it's going to be a pretty big number here. It looks like 175,000,760,000. So in the millions, that's the number of different ways that we can have the license plate. Now for B, it says how many license plates with that same kind of configuration, so same kind of style, but let's say we don't want them to repeat. So I can't have like the letters for the, those three B, like AAA, like I um, am kind of basically be reducing my possibilities. So my first number can still be 10. My first letter, there's still 26 ways that can happen. But then, because I don't want to repeat, once I choose a letter, then there's only 25 ways to choose the next one. And if I chose those two letters, then there's only going to be 24 ways left to choose the last one. Similarly with the numbers, if I chose my first digit for the beginning, then there's only going to be nine more ways to choose that next one. Then there will be eight, and then there will be seven. And so when we multiply this together, it's going to be a smaller amount because there, we're saying there isn't that repetition. And it looks like we'll have like 786, let's see, I need to put my commas in here with the calculator. Do, 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 do. It's only 78 million. All right. We're going to continue on with this kind of idea, this fundamental accounting principle. Um, suppose that we have four tasks that we need to complete today. We're going to exercise, do some homework, laundry, grocery shopping, fun, fun day. <laughs> um, we're going to use the fundamental accounting principle to see, well, how many different ways can we complete that? Like, do I do my exercise first and then do homework, laundry, and grocery shopping? Or can I do grocery shopping first and then exercise and homework and laundry? So how many different ways can I actually complete these activities? Um, and so if we think about it, there are four tasks that we have. So there's four ways that we can pick the first task. But then once the task is done, let's say I ended up exercises what I chose to do. Then there's only going to be three more ways uh, for the next activity. And it will continue on once I choose another activity. So let's say I chose exercise, I chose homework, then there's only two ways that I could choose the next activity. And then that leaves only one activity for the rest. So this one's like kind of like a countdown. We had four objects. We're rearranging them. Four, three, two, one. That's going to be a total of 24 ways of completing those four activities. So you got options to do those chores. And really when we do that countdown, that's actually 
um, a math term and it's called factorial. So when we wrote four times three times two times one, this is actually four with a little exclamation mark. And it's a little excited, <laughs> but that name uh, for that mark is called factorial. And really it's just one less every single factor. So if I look at these, I'm starting with a factorial, that means start with the eight and then count down one less, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if we multiply that out, well, let's see. I can use a calculator on this. There is a factorial button. Often it's found under PRB. And a factorial will be equal to uh, 40320. For some factorial, it's the same thing, but we don't have the 8 anymore. And when we punch that in, 7. And you don't have to use the factorial button. You could just multiply seven times six times five, but it's kind of nice. And we would get seven factorial to be five zero four zero. Again, it just they they look exactly the same what we're writing here, but we're just taking off a digit because we're starting at a lower number. So when we do six factorial. We get 720, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so 5 factorial is going to be equal to 120, 4 factorial, that's when we just did, right, that's 24, 3 factorial, 6, 2 factorial is 2, 1 factorial, it's kind of boring, it's just the 1, <laughs> so we get 1. And then zero factorial. Well, if I look up above, it was stated here. This is actually a definition, but something cool that you might be able to see when it says what pattern do you notice, which you could think for a minute about what patterns, but we reduced by that last factor every time. So it's kind of like we could say like eight was gone. So it's like it got divided by eight for that first one. Then we divided by seven. This one divided by six, because there's no six anymore. This divided by five. This divided by four, this divided by three, that divided by two. And so if I kind of follow that, it's counting down. If I divide now by one, one divided by one makes one. So zero factorial and one factorial actually both equal to one. All right, well, how is this useful? Well, it kind of helps us with this idea of permutations. We say that there are NPR permutations of size r that may be selected from among n choices without replacement and order matters. So what does that mean? Well really it's what we just did. You just did a permutation. That's a fancy name for looking at four things. We wanted to look at those four and we wanted to choose four to rearrange. And the order mattered. It mattered if I had exercise first or homework first. Um, so that was ordering matters. If I look back at exercise, um, let's see, 2b. Let's see how we could think about 2B. That was this one. That was a license plate where we didn't want the numbers or letters to repeat. And I kind of see that factorial stuff in there. There's 10, 9, 8, 7. And then I also see 26, 25, 24. And so what's happening, if you think about it in terms of picking the numbers first, the order does matter. There's the first place and then the ending three digits. So choosing from 10 possible digits, we chose, how many did we want? We wanted four, and the order mattered. So I'm going to write this little P, because we'll see in a minute there's something called a combination when the order doesn't matter. And so um, looking, oh, one more time, looking at the letter part, 26, 25, 24, <clears throat> that was picking from those 26 letters of the alphabet three to fit in there. And so we have 26P3 times 10P4. And following the pattern of this definition, really NPR is start with your first number. So we're going to start with a 10. We're going to multiply by counting down all the way to this N minus R plus 1. So N minus R, this is our N and our R. So 10 minus 4 is 6. We're going to count down to 1 more than that, so 7. So thinking about it, really it's filling in the spots. We have four spots to fill, so that will be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. 
I like to think about it like that, a little bit more than the fancy definition, uh, but either way is fine. Um, and then for the 26P3, again, following the formula, we know that we're going to count down like 26, 25, and it's all how long? Well, the definition says we subtract 26 minus 3, which is 23. But then we take that 23 and add 1, so we're going to go to just 24. And again, that makes sense, I think, because it's saying you want to take three items and rearrange them. So it's like three spots to fill, 26 ways to pick the first one, 25 to pick the next one, and then 24. So we get the same answer, of course, um, but that's seen in terms of this thing called permutations. Um, for exercise number six, we're looking at a club that's going to have 20 people in it. Um, and we want to have a president, treasurer, and secretary. So we're saying that we have 20 people we want to choose from. We're going to choose three people from it, and the order matters because let's say the first one is president, second one's treasurer, third one's secretary. So using that definition, we know that this would be 20 times counting down until I could take 20 minus 3, which is 17, and take the 17 and add 1, which is 18. So I'm going to keep counting down until 18, which is really just one more time. But the other way to think about it, again, that I like is you're choosing three spots. You could say, like, this is the president, treasurer, secretary. There's 20 ways to choose that first spot. Once it's chosen, then there's 19, then there's 18. And then that all together makes 6840, 6840. All right. Now, sometimes the order doesn't matter. And when the order doesn't matter, um, we're going to have a combination. So if we look at exercise 7, it says um, if the club, same club that we just talked about, say they want to choose three members to have an executive team. Okay, so that means that there's just going to be three people that are kind of like the, the leaders. It's not defining for sure a president, secretary, and treasurer. So we have the kind of the same setup, but because order doesn't matter, we're going to use this new thing called a combination. And because that order doesn't matter, let's think about that president, treasurer, or secretary. So let's say that we had the president, treasurer, or secretary, but let's say that those names didn't matter. We just wanted to select three people. So if we say that the first person was president, treasurer, secretary, then the next person was treasurer, president, secretary, but again, not really caring which position's which, we just want those three, um, how many ways can we rearrange those three things? <clears throat> really, you could think that's like 3P3, or three spots to fill, three ways to fill the first, then two, then one. So that means there were six ways that you could arrange those. If order is not mattering, then we are kind of have too many to choose from. And so you can see in this definition, it's saying, okay, well, let's do the permutation like we were doing, but let's divide out that repetition. So for us, what does that look like? Well, if I write it in terms of permutation, that's 20P3, but we want to divide out those ones that were the same group of three people, but just the different ways that you could permute that. So we're going to have the 20 times 19 times 18, but then over 3 times 2 times 1. Again, this is 3 to choose from, 3 spots to fill. This is 20 to choose from, 3 spots to fill. That's the fast way of doing it. And so when you calculate that, you're going to get 1,140, which is really this number, 6840, divided by the 6, okay? That 6, again, is that, that the number of ways that you could permute or rearrange those three people, because, again, order doesn't matter for this because we want to have an executive team. If you fill it out directly using that um, notation here, then we're saying 20C3, this is our N and our R. So we're going to write 20 factorial over N minus R, so that would be 20 minus 3 times R factorial, so 3 factorial. So we're looking at 20 factorial over 17 factorial times 3 factorial. That looks kind of hard, but look at what happens. 20 factorial is 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 all the way down to 1. And 17 factorial is 17 times 16 times 15 all the way to 1. And then 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. But 
we know that if you have the same number on the top and the bottom and they're factors, they can cross out. So we can actually cross out the rest of that with that and look what we have left. 20 times 19 times 18, which matches that top, and 3 times 2 times 1, which matches that top. You could also punch it into your calculator using that PRB button, um, but again, overall you're going to get 1,140.